the Wellness Hour. An in-depth discussion with today's top physicians and medical leaders. And now, your host, Randy Alvarez. Hi, I'm Randy Alvarez. You're watching this week's Randy Alvarez Marketing Report. We're talking about social media. With us, we have a very popular social media expert, Rita Zamora. Rita, welcome to the program. Thank you for inviting me. Okay. And uh, for, for people that don't know you or know about you, tell us a little bit about your business and who your typical client is. Well, we help doctors grow their practice with uh, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube, social media marketing. Our typical clients are very successful. Uh, their patients love them. They're very good at what they do, but they're looking for another way to be found online, and more and more people are spending time online, so it's important for doctors to have a presence in these social media networks. And Facebook is hot. There's no doubt about it. Facebook is very hot. It actually, last March, it uh, beat out Google for web traffic. Really? Yes. Okay, so should every doctor have both a business page and a personal page? What, what are your thoughts? They don't have to. I think a business page, first and foremost, because it does offer you the opportunity to get analytics versus a personal okay. page. Interesting. Okay, okay. Yes. So you know who's watching you, what else? Correct. You're, all, visits? you're able to see demographics, so you can see is it male or female. Um, they used to be called fans, but now people who like your page, which area they come from, how many uh, visitors that you actually had to your page, and also uh, has anybody unsubscribed or did they hide you? You want to okay. be careful about the amount that you're posting because people can actually hide you um, from their news feeds on Facebook. Okay, now doctors are always coming to me. You know, I have... You know, we've said it before, you know, and she represents mostly dentists, but it could be dermatologists, cosmetic surgeons, plastic surgeons, anyone, Correct. right? I mean, yes. I mean your, your business is anyone. So you have different levels. Not anyone, which, just doctors, doctors primarily. Doctors, okay. Yes. So, uh, and me, but you're going to help me and I'm not yes. a doctor, right? Did you think I was a doctor? Well, you're, you're not, I act you're, like a doctor. <laughs> my kids say. They go, you're not a doctor every time I uh, say this. But we should mention that the doctors are always trying to tell me, you know, Randy, I, I'm going to hire... And there's a lot of trainers out there that to the plastic surgeons that they should hire a $1,500, $2,500 a month. Minimum wage is more than $1,500, but so, you know, $2,500 a month person to manage their social media. And there are certain people that are actually going to do that. I think personally, that's a lot of money to do it. I know that you have prices from anywhere from about $300 to $900 yes. where you handle everything. Is that right? Correct. And I wouldn't say 100% everything because it's really important well, with social stuff, media to... I mean, their personal stuff you're not going to handle. But yes. you're going to help them with getting articles about dermatology Correct. or periodontal disease or whatever the heck they're, yes. they're talking We're about. We're going to set up a strategic plan and also a visit with them to find out what's going on in their office. So we have an open line of communication. Okay, good. Now, what are the three things doctors need to consider before they begin to market with social media? Mm -hmm. Well, three things. Number one, they need to consider who's going to manage it for them because uh, social media does require time, effort, and energy. So you want to figure out ahead of time, you know, who's going to handle this for me? Is it going to be someone within the practice or is it going to be someone that we're going to outsource and have them manage it for me? And it can be free. I mean, for certain people that are fanatic, type A, they don't like to sleep very much. They could be up until three in the morning doing mm -hmm. it themselves. In fact, they get their kicks by doing it. Yes. But you say that's not your typical client. Correct. Your typical client is somebody that they're going, you know, I don't know how this is even going to benefit me. Is yes. it worth it? Is that, is that right? Is that who you... Our typical client is... They're busy, they don't have time to do it. It is. It's a busy doctor. They're very successful and they're very good at what they do and they value their, their free time and they'd rather spend time with their family or um, doing whatever else it is outside of the office that they enjoy rather than to be dabbling in social media. And we make it affordable for them and very effective. We create a strategy for them, craft their message, their content. What are we going to say? When are we going to say it? So three things, you know, what, what are you, who's going to manage it for you? The second point is, you know, what are you going to say and when are you going to say it? Because you want to be careful about that. You don't want to overpost and you don't want things to be too serious. What do you mean overpost? Give me an example. Overpost, uh, for example, I saw a Facebook page for a wonderful doctor and they posted 20 things, whoever was managing his account, um, posted 20 posts, one right after another. So it's sort of like me emailing you 20 different emails, one right after another. And so that can be seen as spammy and just yes, really overwhelming. Yes, so point. people will possibly hide you or maybe not want to like 
um, or subscribe essentially to your future posts because they feel like maybe you're going to spam them. So we plan with the doctors what we're going to say, when we're going to say it. We try to make it fun. Facebook's about being fun and social, sharing some of your personality, showing your I know you have a picture side. of your dog <laughs> and you're wearing a hat. Yes, on my on personal, your... my personal profile. Yes, business I look pretty much like I do today. But on your personal profile, it's important for doctors to share as much as they feel comfortable. Share a bit of their authentic self, show their human side. That's what really is going to benefit you in social media because it helps to build trust with your patients. New patients coming in, that means they're going to accept more treatment from you and they're more likely to refer. Okay, tell me about this, by the way, building your, your, your fans, okay? Um, you know, because I don't know, I, you know, I only know about, about half of the people that are on my personal Facebook. Yes. Okay, because on my website, which I think everybody should do, is they should have this opt-in of follow us on Facebook. You agree with that? Yes. So how do you build that? I mean, so should a doctor first, all of their circle of friends, so if they're a member of a society or an organization, mm -hmm. should they try to friend as many people as they possibly can? And then next, uh, how do they friend the public? Mm -hmm. And do you... Uh, what are your thoughts? Well, it's important to distinguish there's two different pages or profiles that you can have on Facebook. One is a personal profile and one is a business page. And the business page is what most of my clients utilize because it's a public page and okay. you, you, it gets indexed by Google and you, you want to be seen in the public. That's the whole purpose of you marketing, your right? Your personal you page be found. is not seen by Google? It can it, be, it but can you be. can set your privacy settings so that you're private. And a lot of my clients want to maintain their private lives. So, you know, it depends. Everybody's a little bit different. But the thing I like the most about the business pages is that you can see you know, you have access to these analytics, and Facebook's improving the analytics that you get for business pages all the time. And that's really important because you want to see how many people have actually visited your page, how many new people did you have join your community, you know, what's their demographic, what's their age group, what part of the country um, are they coming from. And all of those statistics you, you can only receive from a business page. So I think that's one of the reasons we want to get a business page for the Wellness Hour as well. I know. So you're going to help me, you say. You're going to change something in one minute, you said, in 30 seconds. Well, that was fixing your Twitter account. Oh, my Twitter account. You, you know, and I have a tough time. I'm, you know, I have a tough time. I read the, you know, the Crush It book. If yes. you haven't got Crush It, you've got to get this Gary Vaynerchuk's yes. Crush It. But Twitter, should everybody be... You know, doing Twitter because the doctors are saying I can't wrap my mind around why I would ever want to tweet. Yes. So t tell us why. Well, number one, I think you need to focus on Facebook first. Okay. Because Facebook that's where first. the majority of people are spending their time. And a number. And again, if we're helping you to manage that, we can explore other areas without taking up any of the doctor or his office's time. But I think Twitter is still continuing to evolve. There's definitely a lot of doctors that are already utilizing it, and it can make you a, a celebrity on the internet very quickly so okay okay now if you had to pick one thing that makes or breaks Facebook marketing what is it number one you want to avoid selling so I think our old way of, of marketing and advertising was pushing one-way messages out call us call me do this for me it's all about us we 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 and the new way of marketing is more about relationship building and two-way conversations and that's what's so great about Facebook you can post different items and there's actually interaction and conversation and a dialogue and that's one of the measures of success is how much interaction are you getting on your page so it's not necessarily about numbers it's more about quality versus quantity you might only have you know 500 friends Randy but they're friends that are interacting with you on a regular basis and commenting and liking the different things that you've posted and that really with social media is more important Should than you just do numbers. This? Something just popped in my head. Okay, so you're a dermatologist or you're a dentist or whatever. Should you put specials? We have Botox specials this week on your personal page or should that just be on your business page or should that just stay on your newsletter? with constant contact. What are your yes. thoughts on that, putting well, specials? I think you absolutely can, but you want to be careful about it. And that's, again, where we work with our clients is we craft a strategy for them to say, what are we going to say? When are we going to say it? Because we don't want to be over Okay, so you do that. You do that for them. Absolutely. And that's at risk. I mean, three to $900. I mean, it's really low. You know, and I truly am endorsing you because when I hear a doctor that's going to spend 2000 or $3,000 on somebody that really isn't an expert, it's a lot of money. You know, and yes. they could even use you for six months, learn what they have to learn. Absolutely.